Let's take a listen to this section and the second movement. It's right at the beginning. It's this straight muted strident lick from 32 to 33. Now we'll stop the recording, we'll trim up the beginning of it, drag it back, and then listen to it. And this recording I wrote in my journal, good. So I was happy with how this went, I felt like the notes were centered, I liked the pacing of it, and so um, this was something I was pleased with. And so in my mind, I'm thinking I've got the things figured out. It's all good. And I'm still going to do the next repetition that's at a slower tempo. And I'm just going to use that to continue to try to solidify what I want it to be. Um, and the performance to continue to build good habits that are reliable. good I'm happy with that so that section right there feels like it's pretty good under my fingers the memory is holding up so i'm satisfied with that now we're going to look at the next section to give you a little context of what's going on in this video this is the second program that i wrote for the gregson i detailed this back in episode six this is the second week of that program and this is the third day of that program i recorded this entire practice session so this is future Ryan coming back to correct past Ryan. Past Ryan had just said that I had recorded all of my practice session. That's what I wanted to do, but I ended up only being able to get footage from the second and the third movement. So what we're gonna do in this video is I'm just gonna go through all of the recordings I made for the second movement and talk you through those so that you get sort of a deep look at what's going on, but it might not take us all day to go through it all. All right, past Ryan, Take it away. And what I would like to do in this video is to kind of walk you through a few of the repetitions, what's going on in my mind, what I'm writing down in my journal, and to try to almost do a reaction video to my own playing to give you a little bit more context of what I'm thinking while I'm practicing. Back to the beginning, I always like to trim up the end or the beginning like that, and then we'll go back and listen. So what I wrote in my journal for this section was good. Some memory slips though, a little slow. So I knew right away I had made some of those memory slips, and so in the next repetition that I perform, I'm gonna wanna make sure that I know what I'm trying to get to ahead of time. 
But overall, I was happy with the music. I'm trying to take some risks on the soft side. Maybe I don't have to do that, but I want to feel like I have some room and a nice cushion when I get to the performance for things I'm used to. The goal tempo for this section is 66, and I was just under that on this. I was somewhere around 56 to 60, so not. I might not actually care when we get to the performance, depending on what the vibe is, but... 66 is sort of where I'm aiming, and so the next time I play this section of the program, I'll really try to make sure I'm leaning forward, always feeling like the motion is going forward. So stop that because it was good, and we start the next one at 51 beats per minute with the metronome. No memory slips in that repetition, so the music was good in there. So I feel like I was able to uh, impl implement or imprint some good habits. I was happy with that, so I moved on. There are two things that I think are important about the way I'm approaching my work that I want to share with you. Number one is that I want to memorize this piece. I don't know if I'll be able to memorize this piece, but I'm trying to have my work reflect that. So as I've gotten more and more comfortable with the sections of music, I'm making fewer and fewer mistakes. I'm actually weaning myself off of the music. I'm trying to challenge myself to see how much can I remember about each section. And then the other thing that I'm trying to do is that in week one, I would play all of the repetitions with a metronome, just like I do normally. But in order to challenge my ability to recall what the feeling is like for each of these sections without a metronome, which is what I'm going to have to do in performance, I'm taking the metronome away from the first repetition of each section, which is the performance repetition. What this is doing is this is helping me see that sometimes I'm playing the fast sections too fast, actually, or I'm playing the slow sections a little too slow and they need to move ahead. This kind of feedback is pretty essential in being able to get into the right groove or the right feel when it comes time for the performance. I love this section of the piece, this cut muted part here. One of my challenges that I've faced is just a, being a little bit too slow on this, but what I'm mainly going for is trying to get the first note to be not short, not da di da, but da di da, da di da. So we'll see how I do. Okay, so musically I felt like I did pretty well. There weren't that many missed notes or maybe even no missed notes. I think the rhythm was good, so we're just gonna check my time. We're gonna check to make sure that I did it right. This section can be confusing sometimes with 
when the rhythm changes. And so I have the music next to me and I'm not looking at it. But if I need to double check in the middle of the practice session, I can check it. Or if I just completely forget, I'll certainly reference the music then as well. My journal for this, I wrote a couple clicks slow. So I ended up finding that instead of the goal tempo of 44 or 42 or whatever I wrote, I was somewhere around 38 to 40, which doesn't seem like a big deal, but at a slow tempo like this, uh, it is a bigger gap than at faster tempos. So next time I do it, I'm just going to try to feel it a little bit more fluid and hope that that fixes the problem. And um, I'll probably end up skipping this repetition because it's the same. That's right. Sometimes I forget to hit solo and I get to hear all of the recordings I've made, all 310 recordings. So probably going to skip ahead from this repetition because it went well. We don't necessarily need to listen to the whole entire thing. So I'm going to skip ahead. All right. So this next section that we're going to dive into is towards the end of the cadenza. It's where everything picks up right before it jumps into the double tonguing section that leads into the third movement. It's a pretty short section, so once we get started here, we'll hear how I did on that, and then we'll talk about that. overall pretty good in my journal I wrote pretty good so it's not bad it's just not as clean as it could be this section's really tough for me the cross fingerings from D flat to A flat going really quickly into D to A it's pretty challenging but I'm getting better at it so I'm gonna do another repetition uh, what looks like 30 clicks slower and that hopefully is gonna help me continue to drive the good habits and the good uh, neural patterns that I want to have more automatically. Okay, good. And then the final section from the second movement here is going to be the double tonguing section that ends out the movement. Mostly what I'm looking for here is as crisp as possible. It's also a mentally challenging thing to memorize because it, it just doesn't feel like it has any, um, well, let's just listen. Like right there should have been an E instead of an A. So you could hear that memory blip. And this is kind of what I was trying to say, but couldn't find the words. That it feels like it's almost atonal. Maybe it is atonal, or maybe there's some sort of structure, but it's hard to figure it out. So while I'm playing it, I'm just trying to remember, you know, the first two notes and then the bottom note the first time around is a B flat. I'm just trying to remember all almost the individual notes until it becomes more muscle memory. Sections like this are why I'm not necessarily convinced I'm going to be able to play this memorized in a week. But we're going to do it again at a slower tempo and hope that I don't have any memory blips, but I think I actually did. Yeah, right there. So overall, again, wasn't necessarily 
a perfect section, but musically, I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's crisp. I think it's clear. I think there's good direction. I can hear the timpani playing with me uh, halfway through when the timpani comes in. So overall, I think that's in a good place. It's just going to be, can I continue to... Uh, dial in the memorization on that. So that's the end of the second movement. I did this same exact process for the first movement and for the third movement. I don't think it's necessary to share all of that because it's literally the same exact thing that I'm trying to do. I do a recording, I'm doing it, trying to do it memorized, and I'm trying to do it without a metronome so that I can get a feel for how fast or how slow or if I'm how close I am to the goal tempo. And then I'm listening back to it, writing notes in my journal, and and then just still continuing to refine, still continuing even at this late stage to see if I can pull a little bit more progress out of it. And then I'll do another repetition after it that's much slower so that I can continue to drive in good habits. For me, one of the most difficult parts of this process is letting certain things be from day to day that might not be as good as you want them to be, but will shore themselves up over the course of the process. When I was younger, I used to try to learn the music as fast as I possibly could, and then I would just run things over and over and over and over again until the performance. While this was a relatively effective way to learn, I don't think that it allowed me to truly tap into my very, very best potential. And so with this process, what I'm doing is trying to stretch out the time that I'm learning and and use each and every day to continually improve, hopefully right up until the performance. The more I've been diving into this piece, the more I find it to just be a... The more I'm diving into this piece and getting my own ideas,